Keep it a go. Okay, hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey. Hi, I'm Minna. This is Nicholas. Hi. We're from Permastructure and we run Earthbag Building Workshops and Services. We're going to build a Earthbag building similar to this one. We'll build a meditation room slash sauna dome. It's going to be three meter wide and three meter high. Day one. We're here with Nicholas and Minna and a bunch of earthbaggers. They'll be teaching us how to build our own earthbag dome. Let's get our hands dirty. It's a great, great technique to teach people where they can be self-sufficient and be able to build their own home. You know, the basic foundation of life is food and shelter. Originally it was designed for emergency shelters. So the idea was anyone with a coffee can who, anyone who can lift a coffee can of soil can build the dome, and that's, that's the idea. The embodied energy of building something like an earth bag building is much, much less than what it takes to build a, a traditional style house. It's such a new technology coming here, a new style of building, and yet it's such an old style of building that's been done for centuries. What is the purpose of doing this? This compacts the soil at the bottom so it's nice and dense and flat and it doesn't go any more lower. Mm. The secret is water and lots of pressure eventually becomes like rock. While Nick measures the compass chain, the others start laying the scoria foundation over the drainage pipe. Stabilise it. Give us a smile. And as a second precaution over the scoria, we've added a um, waterproofing membrane, which is uh, not yet finished, but the principle is that we're putting this whole layer around. We're going to lay our first layer of uh, a white uh, packed earth bag in it and wrap it around just for this first layer. So there's a separation between the moisture underneath to the actual building. This is pretty much uh, the, the finicky bit of the building at the beginning because you want yeah. strong foundation so your building doesn't sink. Yeah. But once you've done this properly, the rest is really fun. You'll see like <laughs> the thing will come up every day. The sun is out on day two, giving the puddles a chance to dry out. The foundations are just about complete and are tucked neatly into the scoria bed. And now we're finishing the bottom of the buttress for the main door. And uh, today we're going to do the next side of the door, put the door form in and start away with the actual dome wall. There you go. Now you wrap it like a present. The boys finish the last foundation bag. Good job. Let's wrap this baby. <laughs> mm. So now we're gonna lay the barbed wire on top of it, like the other one so that we get friction and also this will tie in the barbed wire will tie into this side i'll just show you how i'm doing it that it works so that's like two three parts this is the 10 okay. right. to 1 right, soil happen, cement mix that's fine. and we try to get it a, a texture uh, which is uh, not leaving much dampness on the hands but will stick the soil together uh, and once that's tamped into the bag that will hold its shape and then it will set, uh, set solid. Absolutely perfect mix, just beautiful and crumbly and delicious. When we're done putting the, the bags around, we can lift, we can remove the wood underneath and drop the foam and put it down. There you go. <laughs> when you finish a bag, you need to make sure you stump the end so that it's well compacted so you can do a beautiful wrapping. And then you tuck it underneath so that it can get caught by the barbed wire underneath and this is the secret of locking a bag there you go and the last step of course give it a bit of a whack it's a 
make sure that uh, the, the ring is at the same distance all the way around. So it's a, it's a perfect circle. And as you go up, you actually just make this smaller. So the rings get slowly smaller and smaller until it forms a perfect dome. So we're going to do the soil practicum. You want to achieve about 300 PSI in your bags. So if you want the council to accept and have a structural engineer sign off your papers and with all the research that's been done in California, you want a certain compressive strength. And so you dig about 25 to 30 centimeters down and you take a sample not only in one spot, but you want to do it a few all around where you think you're going to use to fill up half a jar. You put water in it. And then you sit it for a while and the sediments and everything will settle down in a properly orderly fashion. <laughs> what is soil? Soil it's organic matter, aggregates, sand, clay and silt. So all your sand and your coarse sands will fall at the bottom, then you get your thinner sand, then you can see your clay and then you can see very thin is the silt. So silt is unusable. If you had all silt in your thing, if you see really thin gray particles all over, you'd want to use other soil, you can't do anything with it. The ideal mix that you'd want to get that makes like rock solid sample, it's 30% clay, 70% sand, you know? Quick dunk in water gives us an idea of how hard the mix will set. Yeah, it's hard and it, it's, it doesn't feel uh, wet. The earth baggers get back to work. Good job, guys. For many of the earth baggers, these structures represent a whole lifestyle, synonymous with growing their own veggies and harvesting all the energy and water they need. Um, I heard in, in Bali somebody went there and, and, and told a, a tribes person how much it cost them mm. to buy a house and they laughed at them and they said when we get married, the whole village builds us mm. a house. And I think that there's a massive uh, correcting in our consciousness that needs to happen so that we are just supporting each other to, to live in a, in a sustainable and caring way that doesn't cost the rest of your life. Whereas a standard house, you have a house and you have a drive and carport in, in your car. Whereas the whole point with the earth, earth bag house is you have your earth bag house and maybe you have your you know, herbs and vegetables and you know, your chips and whatever. So the design of the house, I guess, is built into the landscape rather than just being you know, put down side by side with other houses. Yeah, it really is. And using that space as, um, as kind of a, a machine almost to look after you. I mean, the beauty about this is you can mix and match with other building styles as well, like um, you know, hay, ba hay bale or um, rammed earth or mud brick or, or um, um, you know, all other kinds of natural building you can, you can meld with this. As you see, anyone can get involved and build with it and uh, it's, it's a very community orientated building process. There's so much suburbia and suburbia could be such a rich resource. It could be the, the source of amazing amounts of food, um, incredible sustainable initiatives could come out of the burbs. Look what we've achieved. Four days work that is, not even three and a half. You know, and we're learning, so we're not actually working all the time. We're spending at least a few hours of every day actually talking about things like permitting. Um, 
soil types. I'm interested in this kind of building. Um, I think in, a, in an era where we live, where value is created from scarcity and complexity, this sort of construction is so inspiring because it's made by people with very little skills. But, you know, we were able to create, co-create something together that's much more ecological than other styles of building. The dome is beginning to curve inwards. Each smooth layer is held together by barbed wire. It's the end of day four. The earth baggers have laid 14 layers of earth bags and one underground to create a sturdy structure. Pretty high up. <laughs> Nicholas teaches the earth baggers how to build an arch window. The bag curves over the form and is then tamped into place. Next comes a barbed wire. And then the, bag, the next bag comes across and then you wrap them as tight as you can around it. The bag is pulled forward using brute strength. That's pretty good, right? Voila. Stuff. Pretty good. So now we're going to flatten it so it's like an eave. And then we're just going to wrap it and then we'll put a bag over it and it's going to secure everything in. Just and this is what we call an camera. eyebrow bag. It's day six. Now the workers are eager to finish the dome. Building a dome out of earth bag is very strong. It's very economical. It's a monolithic form of building. It means you're using one material. Besides the bags which are preferably used new, you're using the soil that's under your feet which is the most abundant material on the on planet. planet yeah. Day 8. The dome stands much higher than the door now, standing just over 2 metres. It still stands strong as the weight is distributed equally around the domes through the walls down to the foundation, holding its lovely egg-like structure in shape. As we go up, it's what we call corbelling. That means it steps in a little bit by little bit. So it's like those kids' little donuts games that you put on top of each other. It reduces and it's going to shut itself at the end and just put one bag in the end and it's finished. For the top of the door, because we were teaching how to do a door without an arch, we put a lentil, uh, which is a, a strong structural piece of uh, pine. And over it, the bag that runs over it, it stabilizes a bit stronger to 15 percent. My favourite part of this has been seeing that I'm actually capable of doing this myself yeah. and that this structure is stronger than, what car do they drive? you know, potentially stronger than the, the home that I grew up in. What car in. do they drive? Wonderful curved arch. So smooth. Such a beautiful angles and lines. It's curves. So the last awning, we miscalculated its height and it was too huge for the actual aesthetics of the dome and it was just ugly. <laughs> we didn't like it. We made a major decision and came back in the morning and put it down and threw it on the floor and recycled all the material and made this new form and decided to make a pillow bag arch which is much more appropriate and creates a much bigger awning. You can do a few mistakes, remodel it. It's like painting and sculpture, you know, you might not like something you do and go on, the nose on that person looks bad and pull out the nose and make a different little shape. Last bag. It's a good moment. <laughs> this is the last bucket of the dome. Final bucket. Final bucket. <laughs> the moment of truth. Yeah. Go for it. Just build a house. We did. So awesome.
Done about a quarter of the cobbing on the outside, and uh, we had a bit of a break away, and so in that kids. time it pelted down in Melbourne all week, and really very small amount of wearing off the cob. So in that week we've been away, it's been a little bit of wear here, a little bit of wear there, and that's on fresh cob, so it wasn't even properly set and dried yet. So it's pretty good, tiny bit here. And the roof is totally sealed, like no wearing whatsoever. It just feels like it's compacted it even stronger. So. <laughs> I'm making a cob mix and I've put, uh, I've left my hard clay seed in water so it's easy to work with. And I've put like maybe about 50% clay, 50% sand. And then I'm kneading it with my feet until you want to get like a nice con uh, like doughy consistency. The tarp is a way of mixing when you don't want to mix, when you don't have a clay mixer. And you can roll it up like this. You want to feel it quite homogeneous and really well mixed. Um, we're adding straw to the uh, to the clay and sand mix, um, which will work as a binder. Yeah, no, the binder. So, well, it's a, it adds structure, fibral structure. Yeah, fibral yeah. structure. It's like a straw in a cob mix is what is a, a reinforcement rebar in a concrete mix. The same thing. People have been building with uh, clay and mud since eons, like it's been around this proof that they've been doing that for about 10,000 years. For cob, which is a certain technique using clay, in England there's houses that are dated since the 13th century. And it creates this kind of solid wall material when it dries. This is our finished product, it's a nice loaf of cob. If you look in it, it's full of fiber throughout the whole mix, which when dried reinforces the whole structure of it. And the uh, secret with cob is that if you put too much clay, the clay shrinks and it possibly cracks. If you put too much sand, it possibly becomes brittle. But if you put just the right amount of mix, the sand prevents the whole mix from shrinking too much and it becomes like glue and it's, it's, it's amazing. It's pretty labor intensive. It can be really, it can be really fast if you have a good team of people yeah. who are all working together and yeah. you can just whip it up really fast. But yeah. if it's if it's one or two people, it can, it can yeah. definitely drag out and take a long time. So you slap it on so it really reaches deep in between the bags. And this is the rough coat, so it doesn't need to be really smooth, it's just an insulative coat. So satisfying! <laughs> Come and look at this. Because I've, I've built, before I started, I built enough of them that I knew that each time you build one, yeah, there's so build. many things that are different. <laughs> And even with a lot of, I've built with ex really experienced people back in California and I had them scratching their heads quite a few times and it came to a point when I came here I knew that I knew better than last time but I knew that there was so much more to learn. What is the favorite bit? This, I've got quite a few favorite bits like I'm uh, really enjoying the new doorway it's really nice with the piece of pieces of recycled wood, the roof into stairs, which like you can put plants on and stuff. And but I don't know, it's hard to say which is my favorite bit. The whole dome is my favorite bit. It's really awesome. I can definitely point out my least favorite bits. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what's that? Uh, my least favorite bits is uh, oh, I we had a few problems with the old plasters, and I have to fix it. And uh, it's like a few mistakes in the mix and things. And it's not, it's not very hard to fix, but it's just another thing to do. And uh, 
All in all, this dome has four layers of plaster because we've been playing with different mixes from different people all around the world and trying to work out what was good for here. You know, just like trying to go 100% natural and thought also we'd see how it goes with cement and, you know, and, and in, the, in the end, if you come inside, you'll see we've done 100% natural slake lime plaster and that worked perfectly. There's no cracks. It's really awesome. But in real life situations, you can use this technique to build a square house and put a normal truss and a normal pitch roof on it. So that's why it's really great for people. You don't, you can have your land, build your square walls and put any roof you want. And, and that will be very cost effective. And very strong, and very, very, very insulative, very, very awesome. awesome. <laughs> Just the feeling in here, it's so calm and peaceful. It's perfect for for meditation room or anything really, but it's just so dry and warm and cool in the summer and just such a lovely space to be in. When it's finally fully furnished will be a sauna and this uh, beautiful <laughs> Contraction here is our stove, and uh, my dad made. You fill it up with rocks here, and so it gets really hot. And once the rocks are red hot, you just pour a little bit of water on top of it, and it steams the whole room. We'll invite you over when it's yeah. ready. Mina's dad is always hunting for old pieces of wood and found a whole pile of. Uh, you know how people tear down their old fence to put a new fence in? And it's all red gum, it's really strong solid wood. And we had a whole pile of it. And after cutting it and working at it, just, you know, routing it and sanding it down, we managed to do all our window sides, the door entrance. And that's what we really like about this building. It's really lo-fi and everything in it's pretty much recycled. You know, even inside the bags, it was we managed to get the clean feel of someone's backyard. So the whole project in itself is bits and bobs that's been lying around and there you go. Like building a project from beginning to the end will teach you so many aspects about not just building, but about yourself and life because it's a journey in every aspect and you know, it's something that you have to finish and you start and it doesn't matter what happens, you have to work around it and it's really good. It's like a really good process and I would definitely do it again. I think shelter is like food. It, it's one of the main things that, that I really needed to be passed on and I find that it's sad we've lost already rites of passage and, and core lessons that we should pass on to our kids that are really important to your independence because it's, it's amazing to know that you could be anywhere and you would know how to build your own shelter. <laughs>